brakes. Aircraft braking is provided by multiple disc brakes installed on each main gear wheel assembly. Each assembly has a wear limit indicator. Main wheel brakes are normally powered by hydraulic system B. Normal system B hydraulic brake pressure is approximately 3000 psi. Check valves are located throughout the braking system to prevent reverse flow and loss of hydraulic fluid. A brake accumulator maintains a nitrogen precharge of 1000 psi. Trapped accumulator pressure is capable of providing several brake applications in the event hydraulic pressure is not available. Pressure on the precharged side of the brake accumulator is displayed on a direct reading hydraulic brake pressure gauge located in the left wheel well. Normally, pressure to the brakes is controlled by brake metering valves, which are operated by the rudder pedals. However, during landing gear extension and retraction, the brake metering valves are operated by System A landing gear retract or extend pressure. A lockout de-boost valve in each brake line reduces hydraulic pressure to the brake and limits the loss of system hydraulic fluid should a leak occur on the brake side of the valve. With the brakes applied, the handle must indicate in the green band. If the handle is in the red toward the valve body, the fluid quantity in the brake end of the valve is low. Pulling the reset handle with the brakes applied causes the valve to refill to the proper amount. A hydraulic brake interconnect valve allows System A hydraulic pressure to pressurize the main gear brake system if hydraulic system B is unavailable. Each main wheel brake is provided with anti-skid protection which prevents wheel skidding by controlling brake pressure from the brake metering valves to the brakes. The anti-skid system electronically senses and compares wheel rotation. If the rotation rate of one wheel drops significantly, the system causes the anti-skid valve to reduce and modulate brake pressure, bringing the slower wheel up to speed. A pneumatic brake system is installed to operate the main gear brakes should normal hydraulic braking be unavailable. Pneumatic bottle pressure is displayed on a direct reading gauge located in the nose wheel well. Minimum charge pressure is 1100 psi. Brake system controls and indicators for the captain and first officer are located on the overhead panel captain's instrument panel, the pedestal, and on the rudder pedals. Brake system controls and indicators for the second officer are located on the lower instrument panel. Now let's look at brake system normal operations. Braking pressure is controlled by individual toe brakes on the rudder pedals. Brake system pressure is displayed on the hydraulic brake pressure gauge. With the system unpressurized, an accumulator precharge pressure of 1000 psi is displayed. With hydraulic pressure available, the parking brakes are set by applying pressure to the brake pedals and pulling the parking brake lever up. This locks the main gear brakes and deactivates the anti-skid system. The parking brake light illuminates any time the parking brake lever is locked in the up position. The main gear anti-skid switch controls the operation of the anti-skid system. 
placing the switch to on arms the system. Brake release indicators display the integrity of the anti-skid system's locked wheel control. Any time a full brake release signal is sent to an anti-skid control valve, the appropriate brake release indicator illuminates. In flight, with the landing gear retracted, the anti-skid system is deactivated and all release indicators extinguish. When the landing gear is lowered, the anti-skid system is rearmed, the brakes receive a full release signal, and all indicators illuminate. A three-position anti-skid test switch provides simulated wheel spin-up on the selected wheels. Holding the switch to inboard causes the outboard brake release indicators to illuminate and the inboard brake release indicators to remain extinguished. Moving the test switch to outboard causes the opposite indications to occur. The switch is spring-loaded and returns to the center position when released. To stop wheel spin during gear retraction, System A landing gear retract pressure automatically operates the brake metering valves, allowing System B brake pressure to apply the brakes. During landing gear extension, System A landing gear extend pressure operates the brake metering valves, automatically releasing the main wheel brakes. Now let's look at brake system abnormal operations. Should hydraulic system B fail, the battery powered hydraulic brake interconnect switch allows system A to provide brake pressure. Moving the hydraulic brake interconnect switch to open opens the hydraulic brake interconnect valve and illuminates the hydraulic brake interconnect light. Should hydraulic pressure fail, backup braking is provided by a pneumatic braking system. Differential braking and anti-skid protection are unavailable when the pneumatic braking system is used. Pressure in the pneumatic brake bottle is displayed in the pneumatic brake pressure indicator. The pneumatic brake handle controls the opening and closing of the pneumatic brake control valve. Rotating the handle clockwise opens the valve. A transfer tube changes nitrogen pressure into hydraulic pressure. The brake shuttle valves block the normal hydraulic brake lines and allow brake application through the pneumatic braking system. Pneumatic brake pressure can be maintained by holding the pneumatic brake handle stationary, increased by rotating the handle clockwise, or decreased by rotating the handle counterclockwise. Application of normal hydraulic brakes and pneumatic brakes simultaneously may cause improper shuttle valve movement, resulting in no braking and pneumatic bottle depletion. On the ground, if nose gear strut extension becomes excessive with the anti-skid switch on, the inboard brake release indicators illuminate until strut extension is reduced. In flight, after landing gear extension, failure of any brake release indicator to illuminate indicates either a failure within the anti-skid system or a locked wheel. Refer to the pilot's operating manual for the appropriate procedures to follow.